Hey guys, welcome back to part two of the Extreme Flight Edge 540 build series. Last time round, we unboxed the model, we checked it out, we checked out all the components, and we completed the wings and we completed the stabilizers. So if you haven't seen that already, make sure you check that out. The link will be below. below. The link will be below in the description. And then now, in this video, we're gonna go and get on with the fuse large. We haven't touched that yet. We can completely kill it out, finish it off, and hopefully apply the graphics. Let's get to it. So guys, before we go over to the fuselage, the first thing we need to do is to prepare the rudder. So this is the only control surface that isn't pre-hinged. Um, that's probably for transport reasons, to be honest with you. These hinges that are in there are already glued, but obviously it's not attached to the fuselage, whereas all the other control surfaces are all pre-done for you completely. Um, so the same process as before. Two more horns, one each side. The only option you've got on this edge, uh, at this size, is to run closed loop. And all the closed loop holes and tubes are already cut out and put in for you, which is great. So we'll just go ahead and put the horns on both sides, and then we'll be ready to go and attach this rudder to the fuselage. And there we are guys, horns are in place. So it said exactly the same process as before. Just a quick note though, when you're doing these, make sure you push down the back of them properly. So if you don't push them down properly and they're in, you can get a misalignment between the holes here, which will cause you a bit of problem. Right, okay, so let's get the rudder fitted to the fuselage. Okay guys, so now we've put the horns on the bottom of the rudder. It's time just to offer it up and just, just dry fit it first. Don't bother trying to glue it straight away. And I'll explain why in just a second. So we just line this up and see what kind of gap we get. And that's actually spot on. But when I first tried it, the bottom was out very slightly. Um, so I need to open these holes up. So the best way to do that, if you find that with your kit, let's take it back out is just to get a drill bit the right size and just use it by hand. So just turn it in and just make sure that it, it's free. And what I found on this particular model is this hole here had a little bit of glue in it. And this hole here also was a little bit tight and had a bit, a bit of glue in it. But just by putting the drill bit in, it doesn't feel that deep. You can measure the distance using the rudder if you want, just to check how far you gotta go and perhaps even Put a bit of tape around the drill bit so you know how deep you gotta go. But just do it by hand. Don't bother attaching it to the drill. It's gonna be over the kill. You could do some damage. Do it by hand like that, and then off the rudder back up. So mine fits nice now. So what I'm actually gonna do is fill up these holes with glue, with epoxy again. And I'm gonna put epoxy on the hinges here, just about this far. I'm not gonna go all the way to the top because I don't want the epoxy to rub back and go into the hinge itself. So I'm going to go to about here, then I'm going to push it all in. And of course, if I do get epoxy on the joint, I can use the alcohol spray again, like we did before, just to pull on a bit of tissue and clean up any epoxy left over. So let's get that hinged. I'm just using an old Allen key here to get the glue right inside. I put a bit of tape around the key, just so I know how deep the hinges are going. But this should be absolutely fine. Okay, I'm not worrying if at the moment I'm getting epoxy on the covering. I'm going to clean that up afterwards, or if it's indeed dripping like that one. Because we'll be using our alcohol spray to do the cleaning up. Okay, so it's probably okay for there. I mean, some people stand the model on the nose to do this. Um, you can do that on a model this size. Obviously it's harder on the larger models. I'll try not to kick the camera again. Okay, so now you probably can't see this, but I've just got the rudder on my lap. I'm just putting a little bit of epoxy, like I said, on the actual horns itself but not all the way to the top of the horn because I really don't want it to go around the actual 
hinge mechanism itself because you do not want a sticky rudder or seized rudder. Okay, so working quite quick here. This is five minute epoxy. And let's offer it up. Try to get the epoxy on your fingers because you're going to end up with marks all over your plane. I'm not sure if you guys can see that, so bear with me. So, good bit of gap there at the moment. I've pushed it right in. And then I'm going to bend it over both sides and clean up with my alcohol spray because there is some epoxy dripping out. Let's start from the top. Again, apologies if you can't see that. I really like a small, small gap, ideally kind of one mil or one and a half mil down the hinge line. I don't see anything much bigger than that. still moving which it is let's just get in here and do this side a little bit at the top there tiny bit of the bottom there we go so that is maybe nice and free I haven't got any epoxy on the hinge itself pretty happy with that Okay, so while that's or while the horns are drying earlier, I actually run the closed loop wire. So the holes for this were already opened up, and the other side of the holes there's actually a nice piece of tubing, which gets you going. Stops about here um, on the former. If you thread the closed loop in from the rear, and then you can hook it through the fuselage, which I've which I've done. There they are. So they're just sitting there, ready to go. So the next step we're going to be doing is probably connecting the rear of the closed loop, putting the ball joints on. Um, we'll do that on both sides. And then what I'll do is I'll find the rudder servo and we'll put that in as well. So we'll finish off the closed loop. Let's do that next while the rudder's dry. Okay, so I've attached the, the ball link and the closed loop connection. But I've not done the closed loop yet. Done on both sides of the rudder. And then I've put in the rudder servo, which is again use the same Savox I have in the wings I will be using the tail. I've connected the three inch head, which is what's recommended, and the linkages on this end as well, but not done the closed loop. So I'm just gonna show you quickly how I do my closed loop. I've done this on one of my other videos as well, but I'll show you how to do that one, and I'll get the rest of it finished off. Okay, so first thing, let's thread on some heat shrink. So we can keep the connection tidy later. Closed loop keeper. Make sure you've got enough closed loop wire through. I'll go double the length that I probably need. Put a little more through. Put the closed loop through the connector. And then we're going to go back through. I'm just going to pinch that very slightly, stop it sliding around. We're going to go back through the keeper for the first time second time rather. Pull that tight. Now at that point that probably is enough. I mean it doesn't feel like it's gonna go anywhere. If I pull one of the wires, it's pretty tight. But what I like to do is try and go back through one more time. All right, finally there we go. So you end up with a loop back round. And look, I haven't crimped this yet and there's no way that is going anywhere. A little bit fiddly to do, as you saw, but what I could now do is crimp it. Oh, not much movement in there. That's squashed. Thread this back over and hide that with a bit of heat shrink. So I'm gonna chip, chop the end. this and 
hide the whole lot. Okay guys, so closed loop is done. There's the rear connectors, both sides. And then of course, the servo head is on. And that is nice and tight. Nice and tight and tidy. So let's check out our rudder movement. There we go. And pull. Perfect. Okay. So next. Okay, guys. So front undercarriage is going on right now. So it's just four bolts, a little bit of Loctite on to hold them in. Uh, put the wheel axles on as well, but make sure you've slid the cuffs on first, otherwise you can't get them back on, on both sides. Um, cuffs only go one way around as well. So they've got the longer section at the back, and you just see the joint in the rubber as well that goes on the underside of the aircraft, not on the top. So just close off on that for you. There you go. So next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use some goop to goop these on. I'm first going to draw a faint pencil line across the top of the cuff here. I'll show you on this one. A faint pencil line across the top here. And I'm going to slide that up. I'm going to use my silicone goop up until that pencil line. I'm going to just slide it back down, obviously on both sides as well. And that'll be enough to hold that in place. There's no need to tap a screw through. That'll be absolutely fine on both of those. So I'll get those gooped on now and then we'll do the wheels and the spats. Okay hey guys, so I'm part way through putting the spats on um, which are rather nice, all pre-sprayed obviously and the nut is countersunk and clothed over so it should be nice and strong. Now with this particular model, the edge, you get this little piece to act as a collar as well. So the idea here is this goes on the outside with this big piece of wood and um, the wood is angled as you can see that just about to see it so make sure you put it on the right way round which should be this way round so you want the the collet facing the top to be able to get to it the, the bolt and that's how it goes on now I was told by a friend that he glues these on on the inside of here but to be honest with you if that was glued on I don't think you'd have any chance whatsoever of getting the axle on over the wheel. So I'm not gonna do that. I tend to just leave mine loose. So first thing first, let's get two screws in. Okay, let's just put the collet on. And just do it up slightly. Put the spat on, you've got a single bolt, which I appreciate you can't see at the moment. Going through the other side, but you can see the one over here, which I've already done. Just one bolt on these to hold them on, because obviously they're a bit smaller. So obviously, I've been working on a larger model recently, which had two. and put some Loctite on it. I just want to check that the wheel's spinning enough. It's not quite at the moment, so just gonna tie that one up and then the inside one, loosen very slightly. Just give myself a little bit of a gap and that's enough. He says, loosen it very slightly. too much and adjust this one there we go and 
that is that? So I think that just holds the shape. They do give you extra collets as well to show you um, in case you don't want to fly with the spats on. That's them done. So let's go and do the tail wheel. Okay, so tail wheel. So here's the tail wheel, extreme flight, very nice. The made carbon fiber bracket. You get a couple of screws to screw it in the front section, and then you get this tiny, then you get this ball joint as well, which goes into the rudder itself. So the first job is to epoxy this in place, like so, and once that's dry, slot this in and bolt it on. And there's the finished tail wheel. That's just gluing at the moment, so I've put a little bit of masking tape over that rod because it's spring loaded. It's very slightly, but it's nice and level, and that should be in there just enough to be able to hold tight. The hole, to be you, the hole's a little bit loose, but nice if it was a little bit tighter. Um, but we'll see how that epoxy holds, it should be fine. So anyway, wheels are done. Okay guys, so it's time to get our motor installed. I noticed on the front they've got markings for DA35. I think you can just about see that. There we go. And the X Power 35cc. Now we're going to be using the X Power uh, 40cc motor in this, but it just so happens to have the same fixings as the 35cc. So I've just double checked that by measuring the gaps between the center of the holes, which is about 63 uh, millimeters. And then I've just checked that on here as well by measuring the outer holes. So it is the outer ones which we're going to be using. Um, and draw those out, then we should be able to get the motor fitted. And of course, we're going to be using our Blazing Star standoffs as well. They come with spaces, and you just select how many spaces you want in there to get the right distance for your spinner and your cowling. So I should need about 72 mils. So I'll probably need one of the finest, the smallest spaces there. Um, but let's get this drilled out get the motor fitted and then I'll show you. So there we go guys, the holes are drilled, standoffs are on. I've locked tight the bolts at the back so then I'll come back out now. In the front, I've just done this up temporarily, so just using a couple of spaces, only two bolts at the moment, just so I can double check that distance. So just got the one, it's kind of three mil spacer at the front there. And now we'll try the cowling on and see how close the spinner is to the front of the cowling. There's the gap. That's probably about two and a half mil. It'd be nice if it was a little bit closer than that, but that is the only size space I have, the smallest one they do. So we will settle for that. I mean, it looks pretty good and time the props on there. It'd be absolutely fine. So next job, take that back off, get some Loctite on there, and then we'll fit the ESC. The model's currently upside down. Now, you might not be able to see that, but it's upside down. I'm just working out where to put the ESC. So going inside this, we've got the Castle Phoenix Edge 120, um, suitable up to 12S, so more than powerful enough for this. Uh, there's already a servo hole here for if you're fitting petrol, um, so I'm probably going to utilize that for the wire, essentially, or wires, because you've got the program wire and also the throttle wire to go through. So they'll go somewhere like that through there, and then I'll probably mount this sideways. So we've got space to our connectors. And then as per normal, I'm going to use one of the, some of the leftover spacers from the uh, mount here, from the sand offs, just to raise the ESC very slightly to let air travel um, underneath it as well as on top of it. Um, before I do that though, I'm going to cut out this hole here. So this is actually pre-cut, it's only got a few um, bits of wood here around the outside still holding it in place so it's super easy to cut out and I'm going to do that for cooling so the idea is the air comes through the cowling goes over the ESC and the motor goes through this hole then we'll come out of the bottom of the fuse large so we've not yet opened up the vents on the bottom fuse large I'll do that after all this front end's done but that will allow the air to escape so let's get this fitted and I'll show you there we go the ESC is now fitted there's the spacers you can just see underneath that's bolted through. 
I've just left this loose at the moment. Battery connector, so I'm not sure where the battery is going right now. And we've got to run the back yet. I have though taken the opportunity to extend the throttle cable just with a small extension lead there and just obviously heat shrinked it as well. And then we've left the wires loose as well at the moment. I've not put the heat shrink on them because I'm not sure if the motor is turning in the right direction. So I'm going to leave all the cowling off until I've tested the motor and then we'll put the cowling back on. But I think next step really is to run the um, the wires for the batteries, run the back, get the receiver in there so we can at least test the motor. Okay guys, so we're part way through the wiring. We've made up a UBEC connection here and that's so that the receiver can draw power directly from the, the main batteries which are used for the motor rather than having a separate receiver pack. That's what the owner of this model wants to do. He wants to keep it super light so it's entirely up to him. So there's the UBEC there. There's the receiver in place. I've just spread the aerials out with a little bit of tubing as well. They are touching a little bit of carbon there, which we're going to have to be careful with. Um, so we may adjust that further, but we'll do a full range check, of course, before we test by this model. Still need to mount the switch uh, for the UBEC, which will go right on the edge here. Um, pretty stay on tail roof though, because it should be controlled by plugging the batteries in and out. And I did quickly test the motor as well. So the motor is spinning in the right direction and I've tied up the wiring here. So next up, I'm gonna put the cowling on, put the spinner on, put the prop on. That can now stay on, there's nothing else to be done at the front end. And we better get the rear servos in, because I still haven't done that because I was waiting for some cables. But I've got the extension leads now, so it should be a case of running the extension leads down the tube, uh, rear, rear servos mounted, and then we can probably put the tailplane on and make sure it moves all the right direction. Four. Guys, so it's a little bit dark down this in the workshop. Sorry about that, I need to get some more lighting. But here are the two elevator servers in, one each side, and all the hardware connected. Now this bolt here, or these bolts here are a little bit short. They, do, they are coming just past the nut. I think I'd rather get ones on this slightly longer than that, so I'll change them out before it's flown. Backs are on okay. Let's see what range of movement we have. That is full up, no problem going to full up. Be great for Harriers. Let's try it down. And that's probably just on the extents there. Probably won't take it that far, probably about there. That's kind of maximum down, which I think will be okay as well. I think right now it's more important for the up. Yeah, that's maximum up, that's cool. So I could make that rod a little bit shorter so we can get more down. I think for now, as long as the doesn't go past that point, we're okay. Right. So guys, we've come to one of my favorite parts of the build and that is adding the stickers or adding the juice, which really does finish off the model, getting the right stickers on it, the right decals on it, in my opinion. As a recap, they do ship stickers with it and there's nothing wrong with them whatsoever. I've not even opened them. You can see the instruction manual is still in there. Um, might use some of them on the aircraft. But what we've gone and done is we've ordered a sticker pack from b and &E, which I'll show you now. I'll make sure I add a link to the b &E website in the description of this video, and I'll also add a link to this exact sticker package that I'm about to show you as well, so really recommend you check it out. I'm not affiliated with them at all. I just happen to like their stickers, and so do a few of my friends that I fly with, and the guy that owns this model as well, so we've just got five, six models between us now with their stickers on. So first up, we've got a couple of X's for the Extreme Flight, which go in rudder along with the b and &E graphic symbol. Obviously they've still got the backing and the front on at the moment, so they will be much brighter when I take that off. We have a couple of Savox and Spectrum stickers as well. It'll be Savox going on these because the uh, plane's got Savox servos throughout. We have Edge 540 stickers for the side of the fuselage, one on each side. It's gonna look really nice in this case. These match, the colors on these, the red, the gray, the black, an exact match to what's already on the plane. We have a massive Edge 540 for one of the wing panels. And then on the opposite wing panel, we have Extreme Flight RC. Extreme Flight RC which looks rather nice. And a couple of random GP38 stickers as well. Um, as you know, there's X Power on here, so we could have swapped those out for X Power, but we didn't. Um, Beanie do allow you to do that. I mean, there's sometimes an extra fee for doing so, so we might add some X Power ones at a later date. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and get these put on the plane completely. I'm not going to show that process because I've done that before when I put all the stickers on Big Blue. So I'll make sure there's a link to that video in the description below as well. Hey guys, support the model outside so we can see what it looks like all together for the first time. The stickers have been applied. 
And there we go guys, she is together for the first time and I am really impressed. Let me give you a close up look. Really like this model. And the graphics set up really nice. Quick release system as I've said before on the tail and on the wing and also on the SFGs which I'll just show you now. So you can see, get my shadow out of the way these just unscrew a couple, a couple of turns and slot out really nice design safe taking the bolts all the way out let me know what you think below in the comments so next up i'm going to set up the control throws i'm going to use my trusty e-flight meter to do so which you've seen before if you've not make sure you check out the link in the description below as to me using this and we're going to do that, then I'll show you it all connected and working. Okay guys, we're now all set up and ready to go. Let me show you the control movements. So on normal rates, recommended movements by Extreme Flight. And I'll do it as well. Normal rates, sorry, higher rates. Much more movement there, much more exponential as well. And then we have a max rate just to increase the elevator slightly further, which is what they call the tumble rate. So this is now ready to go so if you enjoyed the video please like and don't forget to subscribe as well it's really appreciated just hit a new milestone on the channel so thanks for that get loads of comments as well next time you see this plane it'll be in the air so i'll see you next time